worship him this morning. He's worthy. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You're so awesome. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We've got a great, big, awesome God. Amen. So thankful to be here this morning in this great atmosphere, the presence of the Lord. I'd like to welcome each and every one of our wonderful guests that are here this morning. Thank you. Make yourself at home. Thank you for taking out of your time to be here with us, to worship with us. Uh, we're excited about what God is going to do. We'd like to welcome all the home folks to the house of the Lord this morning too. Love each and every one of you. Amen. Uh, we're going to go to the Lord in prayer and ask for God's will over this service. So let's all pray together this morning and uh, ask God to, to just have His way. Wonderful Savior, we thank You so much, God. Lord, we ask today, God, that You'll bless, that You'll touch, that Your will will be done, that Your anointing will come, God, and destroy the yoke. We pray, oh God, for Your divine touch, that You'll move, that You'll minister, that You'll heal. Lord, that Your will will be done among us, God, as we come today to worship and magnify Your holy, mighty name. You're awesome, oh God, as we praise you. Lord, we thank you. Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, God, we praise your name today. And amen. Hallelujah. 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 The praise team is getting ready to come back. And as they come to sing, fellowship. Let's shake hands, welcome one another to the house of the Lord, and let's above all worship the Lord with the praise team. moment now, here in this place I stand, to you I pledge my life, to you I lift my hands, you opened up my eyes, I am forever changed, I cannot stop this smile, I'll never be the same.
such a liberty in the house today it says what we were singing today he says I'm surrendered to you and I'm just praising the Lord and this thought came to my mind is that when you give all to him when we give all to him when we surrender ourselves to him there is plenty of liberty there is freedom in the spirit there is freedom in our lives there is freedom in our finances hallelujah I don't know about you but I'm excited to be apostolic in this and this and this latter days hallelujah hallelujah can you give a hand clap of praise hallelujah and a shout of thanksgiving thank you Jesus thank you for the privilege oh, to know you oh hallelujah hallelujah and with being apostolic there is a demonstration of the power hallelujah and we know that God answers our prayers today hallelujah hallelujah if you are watching us we want to pray with you this morning and if you are here today and you are a visitor we want to pray with you as well you came to church hallelujah and we want to pray for your needs today this morning we want to remember Wade Davis that sister Jennifer's uh, uncle he's been missing for five days let's pray that, that they find him well amen and let's pray for comfort to the family as well let's remember let's remember Ken Park he's in, in Anderson has hospital he's a uh, 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 brother uh, Collins know, know him and now uh, let's pray for him that the Lord touched him we, we, we serve an almighty God amen Let's also remember William Holland. He's one of he's one of our visitors. Been here the last two services. I believe he was Sunday and then Wednesday as well. He's having a migraine this morning. Let's remember him praying as well. And he will be here tonight. Also, let's remember Brother David Thompson. And also let's remember Brother uh, a little archer today he's not feeling well let's 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 pray that the lord hallelujah touch and and we pray on his behalf amen we serve an almighty god i'm excited to be in the house of the lord i don't know about you but i'm excited i can't wait to see what he's gonna do hallelujah if we are here he's already doing something hallelujah can you lift up your head can we lift up our hands hallelujah and pray lord we love you we worship you we praise you we give you all the glory and all the honor we know that you're an almighty god and that you are powerful and there is nothing impossible for you O lord we pray this morning oh for archer oh his body O lord oh we pray O lord for william holly today we rebuke that migraine we pray for, Mark, for Ken Park today as well. Touch him, Lord, in the hospital. We pray for Wade Davis today and Brother David Thompson. Oh, Lord Jesus, knowing that there is nothing impossible for you, we declare victory. We declare healing, oh, Lord, in your precious name, in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hey, 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 hey. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. If you have a need today and you're here in the house, I'm going to ask you to come to the front. 
Hallelujah. Let the, let the ministry pray for you. Hallelujah. Let's keep worshiping and praising and give a thanksgiving unto the Lord this morning.
hand of the Lord is reaching into this place today. Allow him to work in the midst. We don't need to be hasty this morning. Allow God to work the way he's wanting to work this morning. The love of God and the anointing of God is sitting down in this place. And there's an opportunity for wounds to be healed and yokes to be destroyed. He is here this morning moving and touching and helping and healing. Let's not take him for granted, church. Let's not take what he's doing for granted. He is awesome and he is mighty and he is good. I'm going to go ahead and call for our ushers while they're coming. I can remember not long after I first got in church, God filled me with the Holy Ghost that we were in service in that little home missions work, and we were in an offering service, taking up the offering. And there was a young lady in there that was bound in the spirit of heaviness. And in that service, God began to move, taking up the offering. And before it was said and done, the offering didn't get completely took up, and that young lady had the Holy Ghost. She busted through the crowd, and she made a way. And she was filled, and God touched her and delivered her in that service. Let's, if when we give cheerfully, when we give openly, when we give, God will always give back. Amen. It may not be a coin in our pocket, but there are souls that can be touched and people that can be delivered, even taken up an offering if we count it as worship. Amen. We're going to go to the Lord together in prayer at this time. And I know many of you have uh, know this prayer. Those of you that don't, this is a prayer that we uh, started some time back about praying over the offering. And it has affected the lives of almost every family, if not every family in this church. It has affected them somewhere. And when you say this, don't just go through the motions. Open your heart and pray this prayer and see what God can do. But let's all join together this morning and let's pray unto the Lord over the offering. Upon the authority of your word. I have given, and it shall be given unto me. Pressed down, shaken together, and running over. I am a giver. I bring my tithes and offering today into your storehouse. Therefore, the enemy is rebuked, and the curse is broken. I live under an open heaven. You pour out upon me such a blessing, there is not enough room to receive it. We receive jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, sales and commissions, benefits and settlements, estates and inheritances, interest and incomes, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, bills paid off, debts demolished and royalties received, my whole family saved and walking with God, perfect health and abundance to walk in divine favor and blessing. I am blessed going in and I am blessed going out. All that I do shall prosper in Jesus' name. Amen. Worship with the praise team as you come and give this morning.
through in my heart, break through in my mind, and break through in my spirit, break through in my soul, break through in my weakness, break through in my struggle. You are the God, you are the God of the breakthrough in my worship, break through in my praise, break through when I live to glorify your name, break through when I dance, break through when I shout. You are the God, you are the God of the breakthrough in my heart. Break through in my spirit, break through in my soul, break through in my weakness, break through in my struggle. You are the God, you are the God of the break through in my worship, break through in my praise, break through in my dare to glorify your name. Break through in a dance, break through in a shout. You are the God, you are the God of the break through in my heart, break through in my mind, break through in my spirit, break through in my soul. Break through in my place, break through in a lift and glorify your name. Break through in a dance, break through in a shout. You are the God, you are the God of the breakthrough. You are the God of the breakthrough. When I can't see my way through, and I really don't know what to do, I look to you. Break through, walls fall down. magnify him this morning your Bible said oh magnify the Lord with me let us exalt his name together praise the name of the Lord shake hands with two or three people around you tell them I'm glad to see you in the house of the Lord and you can be seated today God bless you so good to see all of you in the house of the Lord this morning I know we still have some that's out of town what a blessing it is to see all of you this morning. Glad the good Lord has protected you and brought you back into his house today. Anybody glad to be in God's house this, this Sunday morning? Praise the name of the Lord. Welcome to our guests that are here. Make yourself at home in the presence of the Lord. We are honored to have uh, Sister Faith Thornhill's parents with us today. We're thankful God touched Sister Faith. She's out of the hospital and at service this morning. We sure do love this precious lady. Glad to have her mom and dad with us today. Brother Thornhill is going to be making his way around. He's going to testify this morning. And I just want to say as he's coming right now, come on, bro. And, but as he's coming right now, uh, I want to say a great big thank you for allowing us to be away for a couple of days this week. And uh, we uh, sat on the balcony and we listened to the water go by and we watched the people walk up and down the street. We didn't talk to none of them. We waved and said, bless you, Lord so on <laughs> I even convinced Sister Lambert to ride the mountain coaster this week I think she got the Holy Ghost all over again I'm just saying she had them staggering lips and everything I'm telling you well, we had a great time uh, we ate and slept and then we slept and ate if we didn't have nothing else to do we slept and ate so uh, we had a good time this week and uh, we came back at least 25 pounds heavier the car sat down on that side of the van, not the driver's side this week. It sat down on the passenger side of the van. I'm picking on her. Uh, but, yeah, we had a great time this week, and thank you. Uh, I'd had folks that had sent some messages on uh, Facebook Messenger, didn't know that we were away. And I apologize. I didn't even realize my Facebook Messenger wasn't on until this morning. So <laughs> when I turned it on, it was going beep, 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 all the messages coming through. <laughs> but with that, I do want to say a great big thank you to all of those that helped this past week. Uh, progress, great progress is being made out back on the daycare. And I want to say a great big thank you to everyone who was involved in that process this week. Hopefully, hopefully, the good Lord's willing, by possibly even Wednesday night, all the back will be paved. And uh, we'll be well on our way to having every bit of it paved and ready to open school. And we're excited about all that business. But we are honored today to have Brother and Sister Thornhill. They can't be here tonight. They have got to drive all the way back uh, to Texas, uh, Marble Falls, I think it is, Texas. And that's at least a 12-hour drive from here. We'll pray the Lord will protect them. And we would look forward to seeing them back as soon as possible. We want him to come and leave a word of testimony this morning. God bless you, Brother Thornhill. Well, praise the Lord. God's awesome, isn't he? 
We serve a mighty and awesome God, and there is nothing, nothing that He can't do. It doesn't matter what kind of problem you have, what you're going through in life, or whatever happens in your life, there's nothing impossible for my Almighty God. I love the Lord, and I thank God for what He's done for me, and I thank God for what He's done here in this church. You know, I, I've got to sit and visit with Brother and Sister Collins quite a bit and everything and, and uh, get to hear about everything that's going on in this church. You have a powerhouse church. You don't know how many churches are sitting around that need a bar of soap just to get people moving. But you know, I love God and I give God praise. And I have a testimony that I want to tell you that does involve my daughter. My daughter received the name by faith and everything else. My wife came to me on a job site one day saying that, you know, we're going to lose the baby. And I told her, we're not going to lose the baby. So we began to pray, and God began to pour out His Spirit upon me. And I said, God, I said, don't let us lose this baby. And God, my wife wants a daughter. You give her that daughter. Well, we prayed and everything else and everything come out all right. And about a month, two months a little later, my wife would probably correct me on this. But anyway, we went and had a sonogram done and we was told the doctor. And I told the doctor, I said, God told me that we were going to have a daughter. And I told him what we went through and everything else in that, in that situation. Whenever he ran that sonogram across my wife's stomach, he said, looked at me and he said, Dad, you have a daughter. The tears begin to stream down his face. The power of the Holy Ghost come down upon me. And there was a place that I used to go to pray. And I told Brother Collins this. And I want you to know, prayer is your important key to the kingdom of God. And if you don't pray, you will lose out to the Almighty God. You will lose out. And the world is nothing compared to the Almighty God. The world has nothing to offer except for what God has. He has eternal life. Whenever he went, and I began to go up on this hill at my house, up on the hill, and we overlooked the churches and overlooked the lakes and everything, and I began to pray. And God came up on me and began to start dealing with me, and he said, Name her faith. And he said, in times of troubles and trials, the reason why I want you to name her faith is, is because whenever you look up on that baby, it was faith that saved her. Well, I got news for you, church. It's faith that's got you to where you're at. It's the prayer of God that's got you to where you're at. And it's not over. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many today is walking by faith? We walk by faith, not by sight. Wow, what a word. Thank you, Brother Thornhill. We are blessed today, absolutely. I think Sister Lambert needs to come and testify. You know, years ago when we started evangelizing, that's been a minute ago now, she told me, she said, whatever you would have me to do, I'll pray in the altar, I'll worship, I'll sing, do whatever, but don't put me behind the platform. Don't put me on the platform behind the pulpit to testify. I said, I'll help you out. So ever since then, I've been trying to help out Sister Lambert. So every opportunity I get, I get her to come to the platform, stand behind the pulpit, and testify. How many love Sister Lambert today? God bless you. I love the Lord, and I love all of you. I'm so thankful for that testimony, Brother Thornhill. We couldn't, we couldn't survive without faith in God. Because when life is not fair, and life isn't always fair, life happens to everybody, and God doesn't always answer like we think he's going to. But we know this one thing, 
we can trust the Almighty God that when we don't understand, He has our best interests at heart and He knows so much better than we do what we need and what's going on and what the future holds. And I'm so thankful that we serve a God that never leaves us. He promised us in His Word He would never leave us or forsake us. And we can go to Him with anything. How many have ever went to God with something that was just so small but you just felt like you needed to talk to God about it and He just showed up how many of you have ever been in washing dishes, ladies? Some of you men may wash dishes, I don't know. And the presence of God. You weren't even praying, just washing dishes. And the Lord just swept in. I've been standing at my kitchen sink looking out the window over the parking lot. And the Holy Ghost just come in my house and touch me and give me strength to go through that day. I'm so thankful that we serve a God that knows exactly what we need. I love him today, and I love y'all. Worship with a praise team. flashes. He's caught when the thunder rolls. He's caught way up in heaven. He's caught down in my soul. I know God is God. God don't ever change. I know God is God. And Jesus is his name. He's God that healed my body. He's God that He's caught way up in heaven. He's caught down in my soul. I know God is God. And God don't ever change. I know God is God. And Jesus is his name. Everybody praise him. Praise him. Praise him in the morning. Praise him in the new time. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him in the sun. Well, I don't know what you came to do. I came to praise the Lord. I don't know what you came to do. I came to praise the Lord. You came to do. I came to praise the Lord. Hallelujah! 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 I don't know what you came to do. I came to praise the Lord. I don't know what you came to do. I came to praise the Lord. I don't know what you came to do. I came to praise the Lord. Hallelujah! 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 Let's praise Him. Praise Him. 
new time. More than the words to a song. Can we put it into action for a moment? Off the altar of your tabernacle, can there be a vapor that rises before the Lord? God, you're worthy of glory. God, you're worthy of praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah the touch of the Holy Ghost in this room today. How many want the Lord to do something great in this service this morning? I got up this morning with expectation that God was going to do great things in this house today. I want to say how blessed we are with great ministry in this church. So thankful. God has blessed this church abundantly. The Lord began to deal with my heart. Matter of fact, last weekend, about this very weekend, Lord said that I need to get Brother Drew to preach on this Sunday morning. How many of you love and appreciate Brother Drew Musard? God bless you, Brother Drew. We want you to come and take your liberty. Ministers, the good Lord would have you to today. Amen. Could you continue to give the Lord a hand clap of praise on this Sunday morning? Come on, make it more than just a ritual and a routine, but lift your voice, clap your hands. Magnify the Lord with me this morning. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and what he brought me through, I've got a reason to lift up my voice. I've got a reason to shout unto the Lord. I've got a praise in my spirit. Amen. What a power of the Holy Ghost is here this morning. And I'm so thankful to be able to be here with you. I feel in the Holy Ghost to relay a story to you. We were in prayer Monday night. I work with a lady uh, who had an accident a few weeks ago. She dove off. Uh, she was swimming and she dove off into some water. And when she did, she hit her head and it broke uh, some vertebrae in her back. And it messed up her spinal cord to where she could not move on the left side of her body she was not able to get out of the water somebody had to come out there and get her out of the water and they immediately rushed her to the hospital when they got to the hospital they didn't know at the time what she had done and they realized what had happened and so they sent her to Atlanta Georgia because they did not know how long it would be before she would be able to walk again they didn't know how long it would be before she would be able to use her arms, her neck, move her neck. We went to prayer Monday night. We brought this need to prayer. Some of you may have heard me mention it. And whenever I, I found out news this week that on Tuesday I found out that some of her movement was coming back to her body. I found out that she was having leg spasms in her left leg, but they still didn't know if she would be able, how long, how soon it would be before she'd be able to walk. They didn't know if she'd be able to come back to work and work at our plant. But they found out just a couple of days ago that she's going to be able to walk. She can move all of her body. They said that she's going to be able to come back to work. And she's going to be able to work as she always has. That may not get you excited, but I know that Jesus is the one that did that miracle. Had it not been for Jesus and a church that prays, that lady would still be paralyzed this morning. Amen. Thank you for praying for her. We're believing God for continual miracles in that, that situation. Amen. How many of you are having a good day today? Amen. It's pretty outside. It's hot. Someone said it's hot. It's hot. But it is pretty on this Sunday morning. Amen. I'm as happy as a Chick-fil-A worker on Sunday. I'm happy to be here. Amen. If you would, get your Bibles. Let's go to the book of Acts, chapter 16. Amen. Thank you all for coming to the house of the Lord. I give honor to my pastor and first lady. I'm so thankful that they were able to get away this week. 
and enjoy some time of rest, a well-needed rest, much-needed rest. Amen. We're glad to have them back home. Amen. Praying uh, for my brother, uh, Jesse Scroggins, and his son, Archer. Miss him this morning. Amen. Believing for great things to happen for Archer recovery. Amen. Acts chapter 16, verses 23 through 26. I've had, this, I've had this message on my heart for some time now, but every time I felt to preach it, I, I could not, um, did not feel released in the Holy Ghost. And so today I feel like this is what the Lord is wanting to speak uh, to us in this house. I don't want to be long. I just want the Holy Ghost to move. That's all I want at any point in time, at any point in place. I know y'all know me very well. I know y'all have heard my voice many of times, but at any point in time that you feel the Holy Ghost and you feel to do whatever, you just do whatever you feel. Because we want the Holy Ghost to move and have His way today. Acts 16, verses 23 through 26, it says, And when they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely who having received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in the stocks. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto them. And what's interesting is the prisoners that were there heard the praise that was going on. Suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. Now, I want you, everybody, to notice the word immediately with me. And immediately, all the doors were opened, and everyone's bands were loosed. You could say that it was the prisoners that opened the doors, but they were still bound when the doors opened. You could say it was probably the earthquake that opened the doors, that's a lot of locked doors for that earthquake to just rattle open. Something in me says or feels that there was something that blew into that place. And today, by the help of the Holy Ghost, I want to preach to you the second wind is here. The second wind is here. Amen. Would you lay your hand or lay your Bibles down this morning? And I want you to lift your voice out with a shout of prayer and pray with me for what that God would do what He wants to in this house. God unworthy am I. We give you honor and praise. Would you clap your hands one more time before you're seated? They waited patiently for, the, for Jesus to fulfill his divine promise. That promise was that the Holy Ghost would be poured upon every disciple that followed Christ to benefit them when he was no longer there physically. We read that Jesus gave them a promise in John chapter 14, verses 25 through 26, when he had died and rose again, and he appeared to them. As he appeared to these disciples, he said, These things have I yet spoken unto you, being yet present with you. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. 
And so they took that promise, they took that word from Jesus, and they went and found a small room, probably maybe the size of this room, maybe a little bigger. They probably didn't own the room. It was loaned to them or they rented it. They went to this room, maybe a friend or a neighbor that owned it, allowed them to use. It was called the upper room. And as they went, uh, they didn't go in there with a lot uh, of details put together. They did not know really much of anything other than to go and pray and wait. Uh, they wanted to wait because God had told them that if they would wait, the promise would be fulfilled. Uh, Jesus said to go tarry in Jerusalem till you be endued with power from on high. Uh, and so they did exactly what Jesus uh, had told them them to do uh, they go into this upper room and I like to have a vivid imagination I like to think a little deeper not deeper than everyone else but just think about the text and think about how it's read and kind of put myself in the shoes of the disciples and so I began to think about probably what what was their what was their system what was their strategy what was their what was their scheme and I, I feel like Peter for some reason I feel like Peter was on the forefront of this deal and he was probably leading the people in and leading the charge because God had given him a, an anointing to preach this message that was going to come forth on the day of Pentecost and I feel like when God after God had spoken to Peter and given him such a word maybe he didn't tell anybody about it but there was just an expectation in Peter's heart and in Peter's mind to the place that when he walked into that upper room he said there's something going to happen in this upper room that's going to change uh, the entire world it didn't make sense to him probably uh, if you could put yourself in him his shoes if Jesus was to come to you and say you're going to reach the whole world with the gospel. God's going to, I'm going to use your voice. I'm going to use uh, your heart. I'm going to use your hands to be a world changer. If it was me, I would probably think, well, uh, there's a big world and I'm a small guy. So uh, how are we going to reach all of these people? Uh, but they go into the upper room and they have expectation. It was probably a dark room that maybe had some candles lit because they didn't have electricity. Uh, it may have had a few wooden chairs that had been crafted uh, and they had placed them in there. Uh, it, was, it, it, it was probably a, a room that echoed and made some noise and it probably had some windows in it. So I can see old Peter walking in there and the rest of the people that were there and they probably started opening up windows. Uh, they probably lit the candles if the candles wasn't lit already. And they were sitting there and they began to pray. As they begin to pray, I, I picture that this city around this upper room is hearing the prayers that are coming out of that upper room. And, and, and the disciples are not they're not, they're, it's not awkward to them to be looked at funny, to be talked about in a rude way, or to be, uh, un, uh, to be noticed by everybody in a big crowd. You have to understand that they were disciples, and there were many of people that were always trying to throng Jesus when he would perform a, a miracle or a work. There was always somebody uh, that had something negative to say. So the scoffers and the mockers and those that were making fun of them they were probably used to that by now it probably did not bother them I feel like when they went in there they went in there for the most part the 12 that had seen Jesus appear to them I feel like they went in there with a determination that no matter what happens no matter what anybody says we miss Jesus so much that we need something to fulfill this missing that we have on the inside of us. Uh, they had a void on the inside of them that they had uh, to get filled and, and they had that void there for so long that their determination uh, was whatever it takes to have a move of God. Uh, whatever it takes to see this word fulfilled. Uh, I don't have all the details. Uh, all we know is that 
Jesus is going to send a comforter and it is going to happen just like he said and they're sitting there and all of a sudden maybe they had gotten a little sleepy their eyes may have dozed off a little bit has anybody fell asleep while you were praying I have <laughs> getting up wanting to be devoted man 4 30 in the morning 5 in the morning we're going to get this thing started off right and 10 minutes in you're snoring <laughs> y'all know what I'm talking about y'all know what I'm talking about I'm sure if they've been praying for all this time that maybe I don't know their their mind may have gotten a little sidetracked by those that were leaving out the back doors because some of them were like ah, this ain't worth all the wait ain't nothing happening uh, the atmosphere is still still nothing is taking place we're just praying over and over and over again but they kept praying those that kept praying the bible says that immediately in acts chapter 2 the bible says immediately there was a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind the windows were opened and if they wasn't open they were blown open then because the wind began to blow in that room and when it blew in that room the Holy Ghost set upon every single individual that was in that room and the Bible says in Acts chapter 2 verses 3 it says there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire and it sat upon each of them and verse 4 says and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance so the word that Jesus had prophesied has been fulfilled as in this moment in Acts chapter 2 but the response after the Holy Ghost took place or fell in that room it changed them from the top of their head uh, to the soles of their feet uh, understand I know that I am in an apostolic Pentecostal church uh, full of believers who have been filled with the Holy Ghost some of you longer than me much longer uh, than me but I would to ask you today uh, if you still believe and agree uh, that the Holy Ghost uh, is a life uh, changing uh, gift uh, that when you receive it it doesn't matter what you used to be it doesn't matter what you were once pound with it doesn't matter what used to happen in your life you may have been known as some crazy things but when the Holy Ghost filled you it's a changer it's a life changer does anybody believe oh that a drug addict can be delivered when they receive the gift of the Holy Ghost does any, some of you looking at me like God God didn't deliver you from anything oh does anybody to believe oh that God can set the captive free when he fills him with the Holy Ghost I was bound in addiction all I know is my story I was bound in addiction I could not move but Jesus set me free The Holy Ghost is a life-changing experience. Uh, I want everybody uh, that has ever existed, uh, or I want everybody that's alive today uh, to be filled with the baptism uh, of the Holy Ghost. Uh, and the reason is, uh, is because the Bible says uh, that they cannot make it to heaven uh, unless they've been born again of the water uh, and of the Spirit. Uh, I don't. It doesn't matter how nice they are. Uh, it doesn't matter how uh, it doesn't matter what good deeds they have oh nobody can make it to heaven unless they have felt the first wind in their life nobody oh they may have giftings they may have talents and abilities but the Holy Ghost has got to be in every one of us and the sign has to has to follow they have to speak with other tongues as the spirit gives them the utterance a 
I'm thankful to be Pentecostal. I'm thankful for the Pentecostal experience. I'm thankful that I can go down in a watery grave because there's a lot of people out there oh, that have things in their life that are weighing them down and they're looking for something to wash away the guilt. They're looking for something to wash away oh, the depression and the, and the things that they're dealing with. And they we have what they need when they're baptized in Jesus' name and go down in that watery grave. Oh, Jesus will wash away every sin from their life. Jesus wants to fill everybody with the gift of the Holy Ghost. It's for your family. It's for your children. It's for your neighbors. It, hey, they may not be in church right now. Oh, but it's for them. The Bible says that this promise is not just for me. It's for every race. It's for every color. Oh, it's for every type of life. I got a burden in my spirit. Oh, that this first wind of the Holy Ghost that the apostles felt on the day. I'm not settling for anything less than what the apostles had in the book of Acts. I'm not settling for anything less oh, than what they preached about on the day of Pentecost. Oh, it may be a quiet room, but I believe just like it was in the upper room, the Holy Ghost ghost can sweep into that place and when it does oh there's a response that's uncontrollable that comes out of me oh we can't sit still we can't be quiet because it's the wind of the Holy Ghost if you believe that would you clap your hands right now You may wonder, well, we're, we didn't start out reading in Acts 2. I wanted to explain where the first wind came from. We were talking about, we read about Paul. Paul, in Acts chapter 16, is a man that's been converted unto this wonderful life of living for God. He has received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. He believes the way that the disciples and the apostles are supposed to believe. But Paul is living in a time where he's the one for writing the New Testament. He's the one seeing these things firsthand. And Paul and Silas were at a place in Acts 16 when a vision of a man came to them. When that vision uh, came to them, he was from Macedonia. This man came to Paul in a vision uh, and asked that Paul would come and help him. And so immediately, uh, Paul did not question uh, this vision. He felt it in the Holy Ghost. Uh, the Bible says he released from Troas, and when he did, uh, he went to this place, capital city called Philippi, in Macedonia. When he gets there, him and Silas are praying. They're seeking the will of God. They're seeking the purpose of God. What we, we need to find this man. We need to find this individual. But they did not find a man first. Uh, they came in contact with a woman by the name of Lydia who was a seller of purple. Uh, and Lydia gave them a place to stay. Uh, Lydia gave them a shelter to live in while they were in uh, Macedonia. And as she is there, she, she adhered to the words that Paul would teach. Uh, oh, she, she began, her and her whole family were, were following after what this man of God was saying. Uh, they believed every word that he said. Uh, but Paul and Silas knew uh, that their mission was not uh, for that woman Lydia a seller of purple uh, she was already a believer uh, her family was already converted uh, but they were looking for someone uh, that needed uh, their help uh, they were on a mission uh, that no matter what it took uh, no matter where they had to go in that capital city uh, if they had to go high or low uh, they were going to reach uh, the 
this person that was crying out for help. Well, the devil always sends trouble when someone's determined to have revival. Any time that you make up your mind, and I go, I'm blessed. I get fed steak, beans, and potatoes every single week in this church. I'm blessed to be a part of a revival church. But one thing I have learned, one thing that I have noticed is that when we began to move in a forward direction, Satan and all his minions, if I could say it that way, are alert of where we are going. I'm not here to give the devil credit for anything, but I am here to say that the devil likes to distract when we have made up our mind to move in a certain direction. The devil likes oh, to pull our eyes away oh, when we've made up our mind. We're going to have revival in my home we're going to have revival in my school we're going to have revival in my community we're going to see a harvest oh Satan knows where our heart is and Satan knew the same for Paul and Silas so Satan sends a lady that the Bible calls her damsel who was possessed with a spirit of divination she was a soothsayer she began to say, these, these men are the, the men of the Most High God. These men are, are, are the ones that could speak with eloquent words, wisdom, and power. All the while, she was not giving them credit. She was not trying to compliment them. Uh, she was trying to mock them uh, for who they were uh, and create a distraction in the spirit. Uh, but Paul was very aware uh, that this spirit uh, oh, was attacking him and Silas. Uh, and he was on a mission. Uh, and when you're on a mission, uh, you've got to be willing to take every distraction uh, oh everything that would leap out uh, and throw it to the side uh, you got to be willing uh, oh to look straight ahead and say uh, no devil you're not going to tempt me with that thought uh, no devil you're not going to advance me with that lie uh, no devil you're not going to intimidate me brother Tarazis uh, oh with that wall uh, I'm going to move forward uh, I'm not going to be distracted so Paul oh, Decide, Paul says, okay, I've got apostolic authority. I'm just going to rebuke the spirit. And so he rebukes the spirit out of the woman. Well, immediately when the devil doesn't get his way, he's going to try to lay hands on you. So he tried to lay hands on these men of God. <laughs> Their masters did not see them getting much gain with these men of God. They wasn't detoured. They wasn't distracted. They wasn't, they wasn't pulled away by her nonsense. So they said, well, we'll just throw you in prison. We'll just put you in jail. And so Paul and, si Paul and Silas said, okay, put us in jail. So they put, a, they put them uh, in prison. But what's unique, and I, 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 I've heard this preached before, and I believe it. Uh, what's unique is they did not put them on, on the outer cell, like wh where they were on bond. Uh, they did not put them. They were determined. They're going in, and they ain't coming back out. They're going in this prison, uh, and they're not coming back out of this prison because we don't want them creating uh, no problems uh, in our city. Uh, oh, we know that they're a Jesus freak, uh, but we don't want them coming in our city uh, and converting anybody that's demon-possessed. Uh, oh, we know that they're crazy about the Lord, uh, and they're filled with the Holy Ghost, uh, but we don't want them uh, having the liberty and the freedom uh, oh, to move and operate how they will. Uh, so they said, well, we're going to cast them into the inner prison, the inner parts of the prison. Oh, they could have shackled them up and they could have put them on the outskirts and one of the inner outer rooms. But they said, no, we know how these men are and we know the power that they have. Oh, so we're going to put them into the place that's dark. We're going to put them into the place that's lonely. We're going to put them into the place oh, that stinks and it's not air conditioned. It's not comfortable. Oh, so that maybe they'll die down their passion. 
But when Paul and Silas were put in that prison, uh, their passion did much more than die. It did not die down. It seemed to uh, have lit up even more. Uh, it seemed to have flame even more. It seemed to have grown in them even more. Uh, oh, Paul and Silas are in that prison. And I don't know. I, I wasn't there. But I had a grandmother. I'm not trying to chase rabbits, and I'm not trying to be ADHD preaching this message. But my grandmother said if she ever went to jail, that she'd be perfectly fine as long as she could carry her Bible because she'd win everybody she could to the Lord while being in that jail. Forget the reason why she went there. She's repented of that. But she's going to win everybody that she can while she's in that jail. I imagine that Paul and Silas felt the same way. No matter where we're at, no matter what we're in, the Holy Ghost is going to feel this man. Look, church, we've been through some crazy conditions uh, in the last five years. Uh, oh, but the Lord wants to know if we're still a church that says, uh, no matter the conditions, uh, no matter what we're dealing with, uh, we're going to reach the lost. Uh, oh, we're going to reach those that don't know the Lord. You can put us in a prison. You can put us in a jail. You can put us in isolation. But we're still all going to be on fire for the Lord. Because his Holy Ghost has a fire to it. And it doesn't matter where I am or what I'm dealing with. It does not die down. They were in that prison. I'm sure they didn't quit praying either. I know they prayed at midnight and sang praises, but I'm sure before midnight ever rolled around, when they got the, I'm, I'm sure when they, when they had the shackles put on them, they were probably praying under their breath. Oh, they were probably speaking in tongues and praying over the people that were putting them in jail. Oh, but there was something supernatural oh, that took place in the heart of Paul and Silas. Oh, when Paul got in that inner prison at midnight rolled around on the clock, oh, it didn't matter what anybody else was doing at Paul's midnight Paul was going to be singing praises unto the Lord I don't know that may have been Paul's prayer time during the day oh to give God the first fruits of his day oh Paul was in a prison oh but at midnight oh when everybody else was asleep when everybody else was mumbling and grumbling when everyone else was probably pouting over their sentence Paul said to God be the glory oh you're worthy to be praised Paul began to sing I don't know what songs he sang oh but I'm sure it was songs oh of deliverance because remember Paul was once pound and Paul was once blind and Paul was once lost so he knows what it's like to be pulled out of the world he knows what it's like to be pulled out of sin so I'm sure Sure, when he's in that prison, he didn't fold his arms and complain, but he probably said, Oh, the God be the glory. He probably said, Oh, I've been delivered, I've been set free. The Lord wash me, the Lord cleanse me. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Oh, and Silas joined in with him, shouting out a praise, lifting up a praise in that room, and then all of a sudden. The prisoners wake up. The prisoners heard them praising. That's unusual in a prison. That's unusual with an unknown sentence. You don't know what they're going to do to you, yet you're still praising. Life may put us in many situations. Life may put us in many turns and curves. Oh, but I want the devil to know my praise is not going to change no matter what season of life that I'm put into. Oh, I'm going to take a praise break. It doesn't matter what the report is. My God is worthy to be praised in a prison. Oh, in a right, 
in a righteous woman's house, no matter where, he's worthy to praise. So Paul and Silas, they're praising the Lord. And all of a sudden, the earth begins to tremble because when a man or woman of God gives God their life and gives God their everything, believe you me, the atmosphere knows when that person begins to lift up the name of the Lord. I'd pause for a second and say, if you're a Holy Ghost filled believer, don't be afraid of the stocks. Don't be afraid of the prison. The devil knows who you are and he knows the power that you have and you can change the atmosphere in the prison that you're living in it doesn't matter where you've been it doesn't it doesn't matter who is around in that prison. Oh, just know that you are an atmosphere changer. And so Paul and Silas, they changed the atmosphere of the entire earth. The Bible says that there was a great earthquake that took place. When that earthquake took place, the prison, the foundation of that prison, the foundation of what those magistrates tried to build began to shake when somebody began to lift up praise. The foundation of what those evil men trying to put, oh, Paul and Silas, devout men in prison, their plan, their agenda, their idea, their philosophy, their strategy began to crumble. Oh, when they began to sing praises and pray unto the Lord. And so the foundation shook and all the doors were open. Not, not just the door uh, that Paul and Silas was in, uh, but every door uh, in the entire prison uh, was swung open. There was a shaking. Uh, there was a moving. Uh, oh, but there was a wind that began to blow into that place. There was a wind of the Holy Ghost that began to blow into that room because a devout believer, Paul and Silas, when they began to praise, it changed something in the atmosphere and it brought a wind into that place. And when the wind blew in, oh, those prisoners' bands were loosed. Oh, there may be somebody this morning, oh, that's dealing with a prison ban in your life. Oh, but the wind's blowing in this house. The wind of the Holy Ghost is blowing in this room, and it's blowing in deliverance, and it's blowing in freedom. It's blowing in liberty. <laughs> I want the wind of the Holy Ghost. I want it to blow in my home. I want to be sitting there reading my Bible and feel that same wind oh, blow into my room and bring me revelation. I want to be sitting in the emergency room oh, waiting for a result and the wind of God blow through that hospital. Oh, and heal not just me or those who are with me. I wanted to go in rooms where people I don't know are sick and heal them of whatever is wrong with them. Heal them of their sickness and heal them of their disease. I want that same wind of the Holy Ghost that fell on the day of Pentecost and fell and swept through that prison. I don't want to go through casual church, usual church. Oh, I know if we're living in a prison, oh, we may want to go casual because we feel like we're going to be there a long time. But your exit day may be determined by your praise while you're still there. 
when you get to leave that prison uh, may be determined if you're willing to lift up praise uh, while you're still in that prison. Uh, oh, I refuse to be casual uh, just because I'm walking through life circumstances uh, and struggles. Uh, oh, believe you me, uh, I, I pity anybody that's having struggles. Uh, I'm not belittling it. Uh, oh, I'm just encouraging you. Uh, don't go through a Sunday morning uh, and feel like your praise uh, oh, cannot be lifted up because you're walking through something that's struggling and hard. Don't feel like you've got to sit back bound in the chains and shackles. No, no, no. You are a child of God and you've got a right to pray. Would you lift your hands right now? The Holy Ghost is about to blow in this building. Come on, you're a cultivator of wind. You're a cultivator of the wind of the Holy Ghost. You're a cultivator of the revival of the Holy Ghost. I'm hurrying to a close. There's a spirit of intercession that's trying to break loose in this building right now. Come on, I'm done. Let's let the wave of the Holy Ghost move in this room right now. Come on, let's make this entire sanctuary an altar right now. struggles this morning huh? the second wind is here the second wind is here come on let's make 
the second wind, the second wind. Shoto ya baria shata ya da buhu shata ya. Oh shata ya da la buruhu shata ya da la buruhu shata ya. David, pray, pray, pray. Oh, Shataya, no, 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 Sakataya Bahaya, you know Shataya, no more Sataya. Never found unaware. I will open up my mouth and give you praise. Praise is how I'm going to be. It's beautiful. Praise is praise. I don't know what the whole Sakataya is. I don't know what the whole Sakataya is.
Come on, I wish you'd find somebody right now. I want us to be the church. I wish you'd find somebody across this house. If you're not praying, I want you to begin to pray with them. Come on, all over this house, find somebody and pray with him right now. If you're praying, don't stop praying. If you're praying, don't stop praying. Pray for him. Pray for him. Pray for him. Intercede for him. Is a weapon. My praise is a weapon. My praise is a weapon. My praise. My shout is a weapon. My shout is a weapon. My shout is a weapon. seconds right now. Lift your voice and praise him. Out of the abundance of blessings he's poured out in your world. The things that he's brought you out of. Of the pit that he pulled you out of. Uh, of the storm he calmed in your world. Uh, of the way he made out of no way. Uh, I wish somebody would praise him out of the blessings uh, that he has blessed you with. Uh, if you've got breath in your body, uh, you ought to praise him. Uh, if you've got health today, 
strength, you ought to praise him. If you got strength, you ought to praise him. Oh, my praise is a weapon. My praise is we clap our hands? Can we pour out? Praise the Lord. Woo. Hallelujah. It's been a little while. Some of you have sung your song in the night. It's been a little while since some of you in your darkest hour open up your mouth and sung your song in the night. When Paul and Silas sung their song in the night, it not only changed their world, it changed other people's world. Some of you need to quit worrying about what the world thinks about you and start singing your song in the night. No, I got to wait till everything's fixed. I got to wait till the door's open. I got to wait till the foundation is changed. Uh, no, you need to learn how to sing your song in the night. Uh, because in the night hour, it'll not only change me, uh, it'll not only change my world, uh, it'll affect somebody else. Uh, I wonder tonight, uh, can somebody sing your song in the middle of your night hour? Your words don't sound like my words. Your testimony don't look like my testimony. But everybody in this house has a testimony. <laughs> the devil would rather you shut your mouth, sit in your corner, suck your thumb. But I refuse to be silent in my night hour when God's been so good to me. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. I've got to learn to praise him. I got to learn to sing. I got to learn to lift my voice in the darkened moments of my world. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And me are thankful you still got a song. See, angels have to back up when you start singing your song. How can you say that, Brother Lambert? Because they have never been redeemed. They've never been blood washed. They've never been brought out. They've never been filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. So when you start singing your song, angels have to back up and say, that's a song I don't know nothing about right there. That's a song I don't even know the words to. Angels begin to back up. Some of you today need to sing your song because God's been mighty good to some of you. He brought you out of darkness into marvelous light. Some of you, he healed your body. Some of you, he delivered from addiction. Some of you, he broke chains of things of the world out of your life. Some of you need to learn to sing your song even in your darkest moments today. Hallelujah, hallelujah. How many of you are thankful for a word on a Sunday morning? Thank you, Brother Drew. Thank you for following the Holy Ghost today. Bless the name of the Lord. Somebody's coming really quick right now. We've got quick announcements to take care of. We'll take care of birthdays a little bit later. Tell you what I'll do. I'll just take care of myself. How about that? Service tonight starts at what?